You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome to Alive Again on Pet Life Radio. My name is Brent Atwater and I'm your host for today. Why do I get to be the host? Well, I'm considered the world's authority on animal afterlife, animal life after death, and pet reincarnation. And that's sort of a good thing because there are a lot of people out there who secretly want to know about this, who are in their hearts believe this, and who have questions. And one of the things we try to do is answer questions. Today, we have Diane Verga joining us from our Facebook group, which has over 51,000 global members who come and ask their hearts questions about pet loss. And let me tell you, come on down and join us. We have some really lively discussions, and I think it's absolutely fabulous. Uh, Diane's going to field questions from our members and from our listeners out there today, and we're very fortunate that she's joined us. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. Glad to be here. All right, and how's the great state of Connecticut? Connecticut's a little cool and cloudy today, but there are ways to keep warm. Okay. One of the ways to keep warm is to have a pet with you, but when your pet dies, where is the first suit that's going to hug you through cold weather and make you laugh as they're scampering in the sand on the beaches. So our show today is about when is it time to get another pet after the death of your pet. Now that sounds a little convoluted, doesn't it? But uh, what it means is after your pet dies, does it make them mad if you get a pet right away? Or is it disrespectful if you get a pet right away? Or is it going to hurt the other pet family members for you to replace the dead one real quickly all that's what we're going to discuss today and we're going to have a word from our sponsors and be right back sit stay we'll be right back after a short pause well four to be exact pet life radio the number one pet radio network on the planet joins forces with iHeartRadio to put the power of your pets in your pocket awesome Download the iHeartRadio app and rock Pet Life Radio on your phone, on your tablet, on your Xbox, in your car. Pet talk, pet tunes, and fun pet times. Pet Life Radio and iHeartRadio. Positively possum. Let's talk pets on PetLifeRadio.com. We're back. Now, one of the things for those of you who have questions in your heart, we do want you to also, in addition to visiting our Facebook group with over 51,000 global members, check my website out. We've got a lot of blogs. We have this radio show with lots of archives. So you can be on your treadmill and be listening to past podcasts that will help heal your heart throughout all of this. And you can check my book, Animal Life After Death, or Animal Reincarnation. It's the same book, but due to the fact that it's translated into multiple languages around the world, we had to change the title up a little bit simply because of the different global locations and the translations. But check that out. There's over 185 pages, and we're adding to that on every six months basis. When questions are left out, we add those questions in the book, and we hope that it will help heal your heart just a little bit. Now, Diane? You're in charge of the listeners' questions, and what are some today that everyone wants to know? Well, I I think one of the biggest questions, and this was a question I had myself, was when is it too soon, and will getting a new pet too soon possibly interrupt my grieving process? Will my pet who has crossed over be upset with me because I haven't taken the time to grieve? Will my pet who has crossed over see that I'm trying to replace him or her? Well, let's talk about the grieving process. What do you think is an appropriate grieving process? Well, I think it's important to feel, to acknowledge one's grief. I don't think there are appropriate timelines. I, I agree. That's, I think that's a very personal thing. I, I think it's important to not to feel one's feelings of grief. 
not to stuff it, if indeed that is what one is feeling, and most of us are. Well, and a lot of people also deal with anger or guilt. And those who feel that you are angry because of the way the pet died, you must know this, and we did several shows on this. I understand anger because when my fiancé was killed, I was angry that God took him in the car wreck. But, you know, that's the way it was. And, of course, it took me seven years, so that's why I totally honor anybody's grief period. Seven years, I was a basket case. I couldn't even think to be normal. But one of the reasons I try to push people out of grief, and that's a good way to say it, or nudge them out of grief, that's probably a more politically correct way to say it, is so they don't have to deal with it as long as I did and feel the pain as long. And when you have anger, you need to understand that usually everything in life is a lesson and look for the lesson in the death. Don't you agree, Diane? Absolutely. And another thing is when you are grieving out of guilt, There is, again, a lesson and a reason for everything. And your pet, which we did a show on about memory moments, your pet knows when it's going to die. And usually 24 to 48 hours before it dies, it will give you memory moments. And although you're not recognizing them as memory moments at the time because you're caught up in the transition process, do understand that anger and guilt sometimes take an overriding position of grief. What are your comments on that, Diane? So if we're feeling, well, what I can say is I actually just finished texting with someone who's very dear to me, my goddaughter, who told me that she had to have her cat euthanized today Mm. and she was feeling guilt. So that's absolutely what comes up. And I reassured her that that's a perfectly normal feeling. And so, yes, yes, I totally agree with you. Anger and guilt are what what kick in. And sometimes when they're there, we don't fully feel our, our sadness. And I think the sadness a lot of times comes from the fact that they fill a void in our life. And that void is, I know that when I lost my dogs, one of the voids that I miss most is hugging their fursuit. Because I love to bury my face down in their fur collar and hug them and tell them, hey, you pretty boy, hey, jungle boy, or good kitty. And just really love, you know, that tactile sensation of hugging and holding and kissing and, you know, all that sort of stuff. So I think that that is something that's very important. And I think that when a person learns to separate their grief into sections, and that's the best way I would say it, one section is about the anger or guilt, if it's part of the complicated compartments of the grief. And then the second would be you're missing the physical being. I think that's a whole section of that. And I think the third thing is, is acknowledging the living energy of the pet. In your opinion? Yes. And it takes time to overcome the the absence of the physical yep. person, body that, that you can touch and hug and love. And many of us have them in our lives, partially because we are so tactile and move beyond that to a point where we can accept that they're still there in physical form and that we can still and we can still connect with them. And I think that's a really hard thing because when I am doing um, animal communication sessions and I'm working with people and doing these readings trying to, you know, talk about past lives or we're talking about the present life and we're talking about transition. And I really like to use the word transition because when you say a pet is put down, that just pertains to the first suit in the physical body. You can never, let me say that again, never put down a living energy and the soul is living energy. So I try to teach everybody to say transition, and I don't like the word euthanize. That's my personal thing because it's ewy to me, and it just brings up to me guilt and anger and everything. So again, I use the word help them transition because I believe in using the word transition that it encompasses an arc from one being to another being just in a different form. And that's why I think that one of the hardest parts is learning to wrap your head around the fact that the fursuit is separated from the living energy. Now, how did you do that with Selena, Diane? It really took time. I really had to grieve the fact that her physical form was no longer here and meditate and contact her and and center myself so that I could be receptive to the signs she sent. And she did send them and she is sending them. And she came to me in a dream about a month after she passed. And I knew then that she was not only okay, but she was well and whole. And and she hugged me in the dream. It was the closest thing that she could give me to 
to chills. Woo. To, yeah, she let me. She rubbed against my leg in just the way she always did, the best way, best leg rub ever, and let me reach out to pet her, let me hold her, and we had some moments together, and that was pretty wonderful. And it wasn't. That was only a month after she passed, so I wasn't yet able to. I, I woke up and it was bittersweet. I wasn't yet able to say, okay, I'm. <laughs> I know we have a spiritual connection. But I would say that my process was a combination of learning and, and time. And well, I think it always takes time. I think that's the hardest thing to do, to wrap your head around the fact that they are a living energy without a fursuit. Yes. I mean, that is the hardest thing to do. But once you get that, you start getting more signs. And I believe, if I remember correctly, you've got these beautiful little heart-shaped stones. I still am. I'm still getting Really? Them. Tell yes. people about that so they understand how signs, when you start expecting them. See, when you talk about a pet is dead, the pet's going to go, yep, okay, we'll just honor that. Because I have the first thing, it's really fascinating. When I'm doing a reading for somebody, they say to me, well, Brent, tell them I love them. And I go, uh, no. And they rear back and they go, what do you mean you're not going to tell them? I said, you tell them. The very fact that you're asking someone else to tell them about what you want to say in your heart is a sign that you're still considering the deceased fursuit that the body and the soul, that the soul is not living forward. So that's one of the things when I, in my readings, I teach people, talk to your pet as if it is a living energy because it is. It's only the fursuit. And someone said to me, oh, but I hug on its ashes and I hold its ashes and I sleep with its ashes every night. I said, what you're sleeping with is just bone and tooth chips and charcoal fur and burned up toenails. And they went, oh, ooh, that's mm-hmm. being disrespectful. And I'm not, no, I'm not being disrespectful. I'm trying to help you separate that what you're sleeping with, these ashes are literally parts of a body that's gone, but the soul and the spirit is still very much alive and very much talk toable, if there's such a way to say that, and that you can contact them and you can communicate. And if you'll say, because I remember there was a time when you weren't getting signs, Dan, and you talked to Selena and you said, look, I need some more signs. Tell us about that and how you started getting signs again. Because that's, I noticed, was one of the times when you switched from missing her beautiful white, and she was a gorgeous, solid white cat, let me tell you. And how that's when you started transitioning to, okay, you started talking to a living energy instead of a dead fursuit and tell how much difference it made in you getting signs. Oh, it made so much difference. I felt a freedom when I started talking to her on a regular basis. And I didn't, at first I was discouraged because I didn't receive anything back from her, didn't receive any words or pictures. Let me do a little insert here. The reason you don't is when a person shifts their energy from, okay, dead cat to living energy, there's a little gap in there where you really have to believe it yourself in your heart. And that little gap is sometimes the reason that you have a delayed response, like not immediately. You know what I'm saying? So it's while you were shifting your mind, that's the reason you weren't getting signs like immediately. But then when you got fervent about it, tell us from there. Well, I really did need to believe that that this was possible. There's no doubt I believe in the afterlife and that she's still in spirit form. But to believe that she would communicate with me if I I asked her to took me some time to wrap my head around. And then but I just kept going through the motions, kept talking with her, kept singing her songs. I still sing her the songs that I sang to her. And now I sing them with, with joy as opposed to with tears like I was in the beginning. And, and the more I've been able to do that and relax around it and accept that her physical form is no longer here, yet she's still very much alive in spirit form, the more signs I receive. Yeah, and that's the hardest leap, right? That that going from she's alive and well, and when you're in that, well, maybe she is, maybe she isn't, maybe she is, maybe she isn't, in that little mm, leap part, that free fall leap, I guess you would say, or step up in awareness, and you don't get signs, is discouraging, but we need to tell everybody. I mean, try not to get discouraged. It normally takes about two weeks sometimes for that little gap in there. And in the book, I have a whole section on how to talk to your deceased pet and how to feel your deceased pet. And for those of you who can, how to see your deceased pet. So it is possible. And if you've ever done it one time, because somebody called me the other day and said, the minute my dog passed, I saw him lying in the sun 
on our deck, calm as could be. And I knew it was a sign that they were okay. And I said, well, what about after that? I hadn't, and they said, I haven't seen anything since that. So here's something that's really important to know. If you've ever had a sign and they stop, and this is in within the year or two years after the death, it's not about the pet. It's about your mind needing probably to embrace with more sincerity or more belief your beliefs because the pet is just sitting there waiting for you to catch up. And that's the hardest part of all of this to do, don't you think? I really, I really do. And I had, I actually had a sign the morning she transitioned. I expected her to transition. I didn't know when. And I, I woke up in the morning and, and she had crossed over while I was sleeping. Mm-hmm. So she wanted it. But the very first, after I dealt with that, the very first post I saw on Facebook was of a white cat named Moonbeam. And Selena was named after the goddess of the full moon. So if that wasn't a sign yep. that she was okay, I don't know what was. But then I didn't, didn't see Benny for a while. And then the dream came with me holding her about a month later. And then it was a long time again. So... Yes, it's been it's been about me. It's been about where I'm at. And now I'm in a different place 16 months later. And the hearts are everywhere. They're in the clouds. I just saw some in the clouds today. They're in leaves. And they're when I least expect them. And, and such a pleasant surprise because I'm open to them. Yeah, and that's the key because you're then open to them. And another thing you can do in people who want to, there's a whole section of dreams in the book. But you can ask your pet to come visit you in your dreams. They're more than willing to come visit you. She's come to me twice. Okay. Dreams, and I wish it was more, but I guess I'm not connecting with that. The ability well, I, for her to respond to my request yet. I believe it, but I, I guess I'm not completely there. Well, I, I think that, you know, also they come in the ways that is easiest for you to understand at first. Mm-hmm. That makes and, sense. And I think that's the most important thing because some people who dream a lot get dreams all the time and never come see, you know, forms like you get to see hearts everywhere or mm-hmm. find rocks that are in the shape of hearts. Other people never see tangible things like that because they're in tune. So if you're listening to this, don't worry about the signs you're getting. Worry more about how you can solidify your beliefs so that your pet feels it's okay to follow through because they're sitting there in energy ready to to answer you. It's just that your energy needs to match their energy so they can more readily give you a sign. And on that, we're going to take a break and be right back. We'll transport back into the metaphysical right after these earthly words from our sponsors. I'm not much of a reader, but I do wish I were more well-read. There are so many great books coming out. I wish I could find a way to keep up. Audible.com makes it easy to stay well-informed and catch up on your reading simply by listening. Audiobooks from Audible turn downtime into uptime. You'll be more productive and become well-read. Now I'm able to catch up on all the great books I've been wanting to read. With Audible, I feel smarter. Pet Life Radio listeners, try Audible.com now and get your first 30 days of Audible Listener Gold Membership Plan free. And get a free audiobook. Choose from over 100,000 titles. To get this great deal, go to AudibleDeals.com. That's AudibleDeals.com. Hi, this is T.O.D. Anderson, and I'm the host of Get Positive Results on Pet Life Radio. We're going to talk about a variety of topics on canine behavior and training, all based on modern methods that are fun for you and your dog. We might be talking about other critters, too. So join us on Get Positive Results. We'll talk about common issues between you and your dog, answer your questions, discuss different activities you can do with your dog, and keep you posted on current canine news and products. All this on Get Positive Results on Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. We are so grateful for our sponsors who allow us to do this show. So now we're back to give you more answers about the timing of getting another pet. And if you'd like, do follow us on Instagram and YouTube and Pinterest because we're everywhere. We're also on Twitter and we'll be answering questions in video form in the near future. So we'd love to have you come over there and follow our question and answer videos. 
That's Brent Atwater on YouTube or go to my website, www.brentatwater.com. And you'll always find all of the list of stuff, i.e. years and years of my research and resources to give you free information to learn about animal afterlife and uh, reincarnation. So now we're going to talk about mad. Do you think that your pet gets mad if you get a new pet after they've passed? What about you, Diane? I wondered about that initially because after my first ever fur kitty passed at the age of 17, my ex-husband and I needed to fill a void, me more than him. And we adopted two kittens a couple of weeks later. And I really did wonder how my cat who transitioned felt about that. It seems soon. I think what I was hearing was my own feelings about it possibly being too soon because I don't know that I was really ready. But I didn't know, didn't know if she'd be angry, didn't, just didn't know if she would bless that. I didn't know if she would be offended because I didn't, because they didn't look like her. That's the other thing. That's the other thing. They didn't look like her. And I love the way she looked, but I love her in spirit, too. Okay. Well, let me address those two questions right quick. One of the things is animals don't have emotions like get mad. And if they do, it's only on earth, like don't eat my food, stay out of my food bowl, don't Mm -hmm. kick the litter up in my face, and don't sleep in my bed. If they're going to have any, quote, angry issues, and angry is what we humans assign to disgruntled issues, when they get on the other side, they're not going to be mad because it's not about emotions when you're on the other side. When you are living in all there is, it's about peace and harmony and balance. So mad does not carry or transition over to the other side because everything on the other side is in perfect harmony and all there is. So it's more about whatever is best for you and your highest and best good. So no pet is going to get mad. Now, somebody said, well, I brought a new dog into the house and all my other animals were really not happy that they were there. Well, that's a karmic thing between the animals themselves. It's not about your pet going, yo, you fursuits on earth, treat the new thing bad because I don't like it there. No, that's Uh, not happening at all. It's uh, not. It's about the independent, spirited, and individuals on earth who are making their own free will choices about the new pet. So it has nothing to do with the old pets, we're going to get you, or I'm so happy, or anything like that. The new pet is simply interfacing within the group, within the earth dynamics of each of the pets there. So to summarize, mad is only an earth-bound conclusion, and that is an only an earth-issued transaction between creatures and individuals on earth. When a pet's on the other side, all they want you to do is be happy. That's it. Because if they brought you joy and love, that's what they want you to have, joy and love. Now... If your pet died and it was a situation that was a lesson, like you put the pet out and you lived on a highway and your yard wasn't fenced and it passed away and you felt guilt about it, well, that may be more of a lesson. And if you get another pet and bring it right back to your house and you live on a highway and it's not fenced and it gets run over and you feel guilty about it, well, there's a lesson here. So even if you've experienced a lesson, one of the things to do to help assuage your heart and your pain is to say to yourself, is there a lesson in this death? And if there is no lesson is what is the gift in this death? Like a lot of times an animal will pass quickly and people will say to me, but he died so quickly. And I'm saying, well, usually that's a gift because they don't want the owner to suffer through a long illness with them. On the other hand, there are pets who come and take on the owner's illness. Let's say the owner has kidney failure and the pet will have kidney failure. And by learning about pets' kidney failure, the owner learns more how to handle their disorder. And that's usually called an animal empath. But one of the things is mad, nah, that's not going to happen on the other side. Now, is it disrespectful for you to get another pet? No, because once again, they're on the other side. And disrespect is not even an emotion that's considered because everything is in balance. The most important thing that Diane said, and this is what we want to examine a little more, is the timing of when you're ready. 
Because the minute the pet transitions, and this is something people don't understand, but when I see energy, so I look at dead pet spirits, and I talk to them all the way through the transition process, because I've had some animal communicators say, well, I can't talk to your pet till six months from now. Uh, No, you can talk to them if you see energy. You can talk to them right through the fact when they're getting the needle and they're getting the liquid put into them. You can ask them how they feel. You can get them as they pass. You can talk to them as they cross the death line. You can talk to them as they turn into sparkler form. And you can talk to them after they get on the other side. So if you can look at a living energy, which is what I see, the dead pet's energy, you can talk to them the whole time through the whole process. It's sort of like talking to you through a dental process, except you talk to them all the way through transition. A lot of animal communicators have a problem doing that and set a time frame on it because they're talking telepathically, which means in their human mind, they are forming impressions and then they relate the impressions. Well, what stops that interaction is because they're not looking at a living energy and they're looking at a system where, okay, the physical body shuts down, so the impression shuts down. Then they have to wait till the pet gets on the other side, so the impression is the pet's okay. Now they can go back and tap into that impression. But if you see a pet spirit, you can chat with them through the whole thing. And with a human, when you talk about timing, although you can chat with a human about the timing of the transition surrounding the death and how you felt after the death, and now that the pet's dead, how do you feel? One of the things to think about is where is your heart when it comes to determining if it's time for a pet? What do you think, Diane? I think that's very important, and I didn't feel in my heart that it was really time to adopt new kittens after my first kitty passed, but I felt in my head that there was a void, and I just wanted, what what I really wanted to do was find her. I wanted to find her. So I didn't find her. We ended up going to a shelter, and then we went to a pet expo. Didn't find her, but I didn't want to come home empty-handed. And so we brought Selena home, and the next day went to the foster home and got her sister, which ended, long story short, that ended up being the greatest gift in time. But my heart was not ready then. And interestingly, the universe brought me two kittens who were semi-feral and lived under the couch for about a month. And they needed time, and I needed time. And every day I'd come home from work and socialize with them while they were under the couch, put interactive toys under there and put treats on my hand. And it was a very, very gradual process in their time and in my time. So it gave them time to gain courage and me time to heal. Now I feel I did, Selena passed in July of 2013. And I, I did look at kittens last December, but nothing about that felt right. And it really wasn't the right time. And I wasn't looking to replace her, but I was looking to fill the void. I really was. And now that 16 months have gone by and I feel that I have healed, I still shed a tear from time to time, but I feel joy in my continued relationship with her. I really do. And now I feel that my heart would be ready to to accept another path. I feel that she would would bless that. That's a good thing. Now, you know, you said two or three things that we want to point out to the listeners, too, is don't go looking to replace the cat. Go, ooh, that looks like my old cat, therefore I'm going to get it. Or, oh, wow, that looks exactly like my other dog, and therefore I'm going to get it. Well, no, sometimes what's most important is for you to look at the heart and not the fur form it comes in. Because sometimes your transitioned pet will send a puppy, a cat, a bird, a ferret, a reptile to fill the void in your life that is not them, Mm -hmm. but it is a heart connection that helps you heal. Mm -hmm. And that's what your little feral kitties did. They were a heart connection to help you feel. And a lot of people mistakenly think, oh, look at the way that dog looks at me in the eyes. I know that's my pet reincarnated. Well, no. That's not necessarily true at all. Well, they have the same coloring. I know it's my pet reincarnated. Well, no, that's not the reason either. Well, I loved them so much. I know they came back and it's a white kitty. So it has to be my pet reincarnated because my cat was a white kitty. Mm -hmm. Well, no, an animal only reincarnates. And this is for those who are interested in learning that they don't reincarnate to let's have a good time this time, or I'm coming back just because you love me so much, or I'm coming back because we had a special bond. All of those are bogus and reasons to come back. The reason a pet comes back is because you have a lesson to learn and a journey of evolving to do together. And that is the only reason they're going to take the time 
to come back in another fur form and you have to watch them die all over again. That's the downside of it. Mm-hmm. When you get your fluffy, buffy, or muffy back, they all go, oh, I want them back. And I always say, do you want to watch them die again? Yeah. And that, that's sort of, that. you know, that sort of wakes everybody up and they go, I hadn't thought about that. I said, well, you know that if they do come back, they have to physically die again to leave the fur body. But if you have an animal on the other side and you have a connection that's really strong, and this is something you really have to work at to feel, that's the best way to say it, to feel it in an everyday presence, is once they're on the other side and you have an active, living, loving connection, you're never going to lose that. The only thing you lose is the fur hug with the suit. That's it. The rest of it, you can hear them talk, you can see them, you can feel them, you can smell them. You can hear meow, meow, meow. I can hear my dog bark still to this day, but I just can't hug the fursuit. So sometimes it's a gift that they don't incarnate and they do stay on the other side because you get nothing but the good happening all the time. Now, the hardest step is wrapping your head around all that. But once you start seeing them and feeling them and visiting with them dreams and getting signs from them all the time, it's just sort of like, okay, Selena, let's go on a walk today. And you're out there walking. And all of a sudden you see this little heart-shaped stone. You go, yo, girl, I knew you'd be here. <laughs> That's right. That's and, right. It, and it makes it easier. And also, now that I know that there's no way that she would be angry if I adopted another pet and, and I have a continued relationship with her, I don't need the next pet I adopt to be her. As much as I would love for her to come back, I know that I could love, I know now that my heart is open and I could love And how did you come to that? This this is real important. If you can, please try to share with the listeners how you came to that spot because many of them are waking up crying all night long and they just can't get there. And many of them are just searching frantically through hours of the night on the internet looking for that pet co or pet rescue or shelter pet. And they're just driving themselves crazy trying to find my pet, my pet, my pet. When factually, only 30 to 40 percent of pets reincarnate, folks. That's it. So, but there's a whole lot of living ones that are living with you just without the fursuit. So, can you help share how you got through? that to come to the point of you know Selena's alive and well, you know she loves you, and you don't have to frantically search for her. Well, I think a lot of it had to, some of it again had to do with time. Some of it had to do with my my desire to heal. I did have time to prepare for her transition. I had six months, and of course I didn't know when, and that was a very bittersweet time because I didn't know when, but there was so much joy in that time. I saw it as a gift. Every day was a gift. And she lived that way too. And I I learned so much from her that she was living in the moment as they do and making the most of of every day. And so even though I still, I expected her to transition, I had to grieve. I did grieve, but I had the desire to heal and I had the desire to learn. And I got a hold of everything I could get a hold of. I joined the group when I discovered it in December. She passed and had passed in July. I read your book, I listened to podcasts and read blogs, and I I wanted to learn and heal and grow. And at first, I did look, I did look online for other cats, but I I knew and learned that it had to be a heart feeling. It couldn't Mm -hmm. be a frantic, this is the right cat because she's a white cat. And I did look at a litter of white kittens in (laughs) December, and it was just wrong. It just didn't, it didn't feel right. So I, I think mainly I had to listen to my heart and that some time had to go by. I don't know. Like, I guess one of the greatest things that I've learned from you, Brent, and all the resources and other people in the group is that, and and I believe this anyway, that the universe provides and the universe connects you with what you need to be connected with in time. And you can't control or force it to happen. So the looking online, the frantic searching, the needing someone to look identical to your lost pet is just doesn't feel right deep in my heart. And that's truth. And it's the heart connection that keeps you alive forever, even though you don't have Selena's fursuit and I don't have Mike's scrawny body to give a hug to. There is a compartment in my heart that is always filled with all the good and the joy that we shared. And like a little wonderful piece of chocolate, when I hurt the most and am the loneliest and the emptiness in my soul, I will go open up that little box that says Mikey on it which for those who don't know was my fiance who was killed. And I will hold and look at and remember everything beautiful. 
And when you start celebrating all of the gifts that you shared, instead of crying over the loss, you keep that forever, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. And I think and that, that that makes the difference. Great joy. That brings me great joy because I that is for keeps. The first and, suit is not, but that is. And you cannot take that away. And there are many times when I'll be in a place where I'm very uncomfortable and I'll be smiling and people will say, well, she's either a smiling idiot or something's making her happy. And what I'm doing is I'm opening the little door to my mic compartment in my heart and I'm thinking about all the good things to focus on so that it makes what's happening right now this maybe not be pleasant, more pleasant, because I have that, and nobody can take that away. And I think that that's something that we each should value is the joy that you had that made your pet special and the value that they added to your life. And I think you should savor it like something rich and wonderful as it is when you can. And if you can, start taking your grief and compartmentalizing it so that you can understand that you may be crying over the fursuit, that you are expressing joy over the good things you shared. And most of all, that when you're looking for a new animal to come into your home, it's not about replacing because they can never be replaced. It's not about making anyone mad because mad is only a human earth thing. So is disrespect. That's only a human earth thing. None of that occurs on the other side. All they want you to do is be happy and joyful and loved. And that's why a lot of times pets will send you other pets to fill your heart with joy and with love. And I don't think you should ever close your heart if they're sent to you because your pet knows you best. And I think it's just really lovely that Selena sort of sent you some feral kittens because she knew you weren't ready, but she needed your life and void fill. And so she said, well, let's see how to fix this best. Okay, we'll send the feral kittens. So the kittens are going, (laughs) you know, and you're going. So you each had time, like Selena knew you did, to adjust to each other. Actually, that was my first kitty coriander who sent me the feral kittens and selena was one of them oh okay yeah so that was an interesting ride too and i think that that was just a great gift so i hope that those listening diane do you have anything to add or to summarize for the listeners from your experiences about when is the timing of getting a new pet because we've all had to do that in thinking just what you could say to somebody who goes, well, when do I get it? Is it too soon? She died in my arms. How do I know? What would you say to that person? I think to summarize, I would say if you feel like you can love another, if if you're not so totally invested in, in your cat or your animal reincarnating that you don't feel that you could love another or accept the differences. There you go. The differences because... And the uh, differences may bring the most joy, just like you said, when Coriander died, yes. one of those little feral kittens was Selena. Was Selena. And it took me a while to know that, but in time, what joy. And But initially, I looked at Selena's little face. Jasmine wasn't as interactive initially. She's still not that... 15 and a half, but that's okay. She's wonderful. But I looked at Selena's little face and all I could see was, oh, her face, not only was she white and my coriander was a torty, but her face shape is different. I couldn't wrap my head or my heart around her just yet, but I went through the motions and the rest is history, like I said. So if you, I think that's something to consider. If you feel like you could love another, that is different. And from what I understand, Brent, if your pet reincarnates, there are differences anyway. Yes. They're, They're not not only might they not look the same, but they're not going to act exactly the same. They so might have, not even be the same pet. Might be a cat or a dog or a bird. Bunny. And that was another question that people had asked too, was it would my cat, for example, be okay if I would be mad if I adopted a dog and then something not like her. And I know now that that's not true because they come from a place of pure love for us. Yeah. And so, you know, it may be time. You, your cat may be coming back as a dog. I mean, we have Lisa in the group whose cat was a bunny. Right. And then we have a girl whose uh, Jack Russell was a bird. Mm-hmm. So, you know, your pet is going to come back in the most appropriate form to love you. And that's what's important to know. But mad is an earth term. Disrespect is an earth term. Replacing is an earth term because you can't change the thread of love in your heart. Once you've loved, it's pure, it's clean, and it's never replaced. 
So our pet from the other side will never feel disrespected if we adopt very quickly then. If we, never. If we do what we, our, our heads, and maybe others tell us is too soon. It's That's not coming from our pet. That's, that's from not me. coming from your pet. That's coming from human judgmental values and views. Your pet is all nothing but love, 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 and won't you happy, 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 and good, good, good. And if the other pets have a hissy fit, that's just the inter-pet karma between the personalities. Mm -hmm. So there is no perfect time other than when your heart says now and you cannot disrespect, replace or make a pet angry or mad. And determining the time is your heart. And isn't that great to know? I think it really is. And to um, have permission to listen to one's heart. And sometimes in the beginning, I think when we're grieving deeply, it's difficult to separate head from heart. And I think that's why, because it, that what makes it so complicated is you don't separate. After Mike died, I didn't even have a head. I My bet. heart was so splattered all over the world for six years, I couldn't even think. Mm -hmm. So I totally understand how it's just you can't even think. I mean, when you, your whole being is splattered and it's shattered. And so when you can start the process, like I said, of separating the, if it's anger, why did you get angry? What's the lesson? If it's guilt, why do you feel guilty? What's the lesson? The hurt in your heart, is it from either anger or guilt, or is it just from missing their fursuit? And then distinguish the fursuit from the living energy, which is the next level of uh, an expanded awareness, and then use the book. You can touch, feel, and see your pet. I mean, my mother, in 86 years, she went in her garden club. They were 86-year-old ladies, and they could touch and feel and see their energy. So I know you can touch and feel your pet's energy, it's just a matter of time. And a lot of people say, oh, I'm not going to go there because I can't do it. Well, guess what's stopping you from can't doing it? Because you're thinking you can't. Mm -hmm. So it's not a matter of can't do it. It's a matter of you thinking you can't do it because a lot of people don't want to be able to touch their pet on the other side or feel them because then they go, oh, they really are dead. Ah. It's like, I don't want to touch or feel fuzzy on the other side in, in living spirit form because that means they really are dead. Well, no, that means they really are alive. <laughs> they just don't have the fursuit. Do you think it's true, too, that your pet will only give you the communication that he or she knows that you can handle? Yes. For example, if it might scare you to be yes. able to touch your pet from the other side, your pet yes. will do that. Okay. Yes, because what it is, it's you, like the other day, I did a reading, God bless you if you're listening to the podcast, and at the end of the podcast, she said, it's all about me, isn't it? And I went, uh-huh, dog says, you better be catching up. <laughs> so, you know, she was trying so hard to connect with the dog, and she's saying, I don't get this, 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 I don't. the dog just crossed his paws, I'm sitting here looking at the dog laying there next to me, she's going, you get why she doesn't get it? <laughs> and I'm going, yeah. He said, listen to her. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. He said, if she'd get on with herself, <laughs> I'd be much, able to talk with her and communicate with her. Too much negativity. And <laughs> I'm just going, you think? And so at the end of about, you know, three hours, she finally got the fact that it was her. Mm -hmm. And it was really wild. At the end of the reading, she actually heard at the same time that I heard what the dog was saying to me. Oh. And she said, I think I'm hearing blah, 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 because I don't. And I said, that's exactly what the dog said. And I'm sitting here looking at him. She said, and I feel like he's doing this. And I said, yep, got his tail up and his back end up. He's doing the bow and wagging his tail and finally going, yep, mom's finally getting it. It's going to be fun now. And it was just gave me chill bumps that she got to hear at the same time what the pet spirit was saying to me. And in her mind, she got the same image that I saw the pet spirit doing. So that was just like way cool. Oh, that's so, so wonderful. I hope that everyone today will enjoy this podcast. I do hope that you will invite your friends to listen and look at our whole bevy of them that we have. I ask that if you have questions, you join our group. Diane is in our group, and she's there to help answer questions, as are lots of other wonderful members. We have professional bereavement counselors in our group that can help you. We have translators, so you can speak in multiple languages, and we all also use Google Translate. That's me. And I just want you to know that, again, pet death is not final. It's about transition from one form to the other. And determining a time comes from your heart because you had the heart connection. And anger and replace and disrespect is all human terms. Your pet's just nothing but a bundle of unconditional love. And on the other side, all they want you to be is happy. And they like you, if it's your choice and your soul's evolutionary path, 
to be open so they can tell you, show you, and enjoy life without a fursuit with you. If you have any questions, send them to me at brent at petliferadio.com. Come on over to our group because I get a lot of the questions for our shows from our group. And uh, we invite you to go to www.brentatwater.com. See all the resources we have. Look at our blog. Go to YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest. Lots of things out there. And our book, Animal Reincarnation, is the number one resource in the world to help answer your heart's questions. And that's because our wonderful group has fabulous questions and our wonderful listeners send in fabulous questions so that we can answer what you really want to know. I look forward to seeing you next week. See you soon. Let's Talk Pets. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.